Water from the Waccamaw River is always being tested. It's like giving it a quick checkup. We're just seeing um, what things look like. Coastal Carolina University faculty and students consistently monitor water quality in both the ocean and in the river. The purpose is to gauge the general health of our, our water system. Caroline Morton and Andrew Krantz are among a group collecting water from the Waccamaw every two weeks. Professor Susan Liebes and others take samples at least every other day. It's so fascinating what happens very quickly on this river. The Waccamaw River, running through Conway and just a short distance from campus, is not a typical waterway. This is a Blackwater River, very unusual. I I uh, feel myself very fortunate that I'm able to live here. Caroline Morton graduated from Coastal in 2015 and now works for the EQL, or Environmental Quality Lab. Lots of people swim, fish, boat on the river, and knowing if it's healthy or not lets them know if they can eat the fish that they catch, if it's safe to swim. Andrew Krantz is a grad student about to finish his studies at CCU. We, you know, run statistical analysis and then we deliver that information to local municipalities. The testing programs keep an eye on the health of the river. We're looking for long-term trends in water quality and also spot checking for any immediate problems. A variety of samples are taken and then tested, either on site or in the lab. We're looking at uh, bacteria, nutrient loads, uh, turbidity, toxicity, and chlorophyll. In general, the Waccamaw is doing well. The river seems to be in pretty good condition. From around 2002 to 2013, the whole region suffered through drought conditions. More recently, however, there's been an excess of water at times. The past five or six years, everybody knows we've had one flood after another. The chemical composition of the water changes with volume. When there's uh, more extreme events like flooding, we can see how those readings are different. Our DO, for example, dropped a lot after all the flooding. There was very little oxygen in the water. DO is dissolved oxygen. Susan Liebes first noticed a drop in oxygen levels when the river flooded in 1998. I observed that the oxygen levels in the river fell to zero, undetectable levels, even in the surface water here. Some fish kills occur during floods, but wildlife adapts for the most part. The fish will move into waters, if they can, that have higher oxygen. Oxygen levels are now back to normal after last fall's flooding from Hurricane Florence. The ecosystem is resilient. Undergrads and graduate students are involved in all phases of the monitoring programs. It's exciting to be at the forefront, gathering the data, collecting the samples, um, seeing what's actually going into the work. It provides a more well-rounded education. It's nice to have them involved and get to see them apply what they're learning in class. Coastal equips the teams to do the job. We're very fortunate that the university has been able to support the kind of equipment the students need to use. The training for students gives them what they'll need for a career in the field. The students learn skill sets and how to interpret the data that help them it, for their next stage. I know what it takes in the field, in the laboratory, and then the paperwork as well. There are benefits all around. The local community obtains value from the monitoring being done, and the students get training that could make a difference when they apply for a job. Transitioning into a professional field uh, is going to give me an advantage uh, over someone who just has some classroom experience.